Today, we're gonna put the Thingino open source firmware on a $4 Joann camera from Timu. What's up guys, it's Josh from the WL Tech Blog. In today's video, I'm gonna show you my one tool installer for the Joann A2R-U, which Timu sells for anywhere from about 350 to about five bucks. I bought mine for 370 a piece, so I picked up three of them, and these things, sure are cheap they're pretty good but they sure are cheap now before we get started i'm going to mention the ad for these says it is a 1080p camera and actually when you are doing a stream from it it claims to have a resolution of like 2500 by 1600 that is not the case these cameras have 720p sensors in them any resolution above that is going to be just software scaled up and it's going to look terrible so this is a 720p camera but it's four bucks. Now, if you're new to the Thingino firmware, let me give you a little background on it. Thingino is an open source replacement firmware for cameras that run on Ingenic processors. And those are pretty popular out there in retail products, usually found in affordable IP cameras like this. Although $4 is definitely at the bottom end of that price scale, which is awesome. Thingino completely replaces the manufacturer's software and takes you completely out of their ecosystem. So there's no more app, there's no more cloud, there's no more subscriptions, and you can integrate with your own networking software. It exposes OnVIF and RTSP. You get a nice web interface. You get SSH if that's your thing. You get a bunch of awesome features right out of the box, and you get to own your own data. No more concerns about security and privacy. We also have a vibrant community over on Discord. Software is completely developed on GitHub. We always welcome new contributors and new participants and users who just want to hang out. I've got a longer video about Thingino up here if you want to check that out. But what do you say we get started on converting this guy? So today you need one tool and that is a precision Phillips screwdriver for taking the cover off of this guy. I got this set from Dollar General for $1.50 and I've only broken one screwdriver so far. You're also gonna need a micro SD card. Anything 128 megabytes or larger is gonna be just fine. And of course I need to use mine with an adapter. But let's go ahead and jump over to the bench and get started. All right, now the first thing we've gotta do is get ourselves a fresh cam. This guy, I'm opening the box for the first time right now. Like I said, I bought three of these things because they were so cheap. I'm probably gonna buy more. I already have a USB cord, so I'm going to go ahead and use the one I already have and leave this one in the box. Here we have a brand new Juan camera. All right, now real quick, we have to do a little disassembly. So you take the camera and you flip it over and rotate it to here. You'll see a third screw hole appears right there. So we get out our high dollar Phillips screwdriver. And we're just gonna take all three of these screws out. Start with this one. And then get the other two. Now, once you've got the screws out, you go ahead and you rotate the head so that the camera is facing up and you can just give it a little tug and the face comes right off. Now, everything that we need is right here up front. Here you've got your Ingenic processor. This is a T23. Here you have your flash chip. And you see here, there is a dot that indicates pin one and the pins we're interested in is five and six. So the way they're numbered on these chips is counterclockwise. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we've identified five and six are these two right here. We need to get our SD card prepared. So let's jump over into our ThinkPad. All right, now I'm doing this on Linux, but the process is gonna be the same if you're on a Windows or Mac. 
first thing you want to do is come over to the Thingino installers repo, which I've got a link in the video description. You can just click on and you come down. We see you've got a folder here for the Juan A2R U. And over here on the right, we're going to grab this zip file. Ignore this because I'm still writing this. So go ahead and click on the zip file. It's going to take you to this page and present you with this little download button right here. We're going to go ahead and hit that. That's going to grab our installer. Now for actually writing the firmware file, we're going to use the Raspberry Pi imager, which you can get at raspberrypi.com slash software. And if you scroll down, you'll see you have links here for Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. And go ahead and grab that. I've been using some other applications, but after a little experimenting, I've found that this one is actually the most reliable and the easiest to set up. So go ahead and grab Raspberry Pi Imager. All right, we're gonna go ahead and run Raspberry Pi Imager. If you're on Linux, you can do it from command line. It'll probably be in your menu or on Windows or Mac OS, it'll be in your applications. Go ahead and get that running. Now, this tool is normally used for writing SD cards for installing Raspberry Pi operating systems. But if you go over here to choose OS and you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see this option for use custom. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that and go over to our downloads. And we can select our Juan A2R-U.zip. Go ahead and okay that. Then come over to choose storage. We want to select our SD card. We're going to hit next. We do not want to apply OS customization settings and we do want to continue. Now being on Linux, it's going to prompt me for my password. And this only takes a few seconds to write because the image itself is pretty small. The speed of your SD card definitely plays a factor here, but Regardless of speed, it should only take a few seconds. And we have written, we have verified, we are done. We can pop out our SD card and we're done with Linux. Let's go back to the bench. All right, we are back with our written SD card and I'm gonna show you how this works. So we're gonna take the SD card and we're gonna put it in the slot at the top of the camera here. So it goes in this way with the label facing the center of the camera and push it in until it clicks so we're good there now the process is basically i'm going to tell you what we're doing before we do it because we're going to do this together in real time so we identified earlier pins five and six on the camera we're going to take our screwdriver and we're going to put it between the legs of five and six what we're doing is we are creating a short circuit between those pins which is going to prevent the camera from being able to read anything off the flash chip. Now on many devices, including this one, if the camera can't read from the flash, it'll go to some of its backup methods, one of which is looking for a special signature on the SD card, which is on the image that we've created. That's gonna boot from the SD and it's going to load in a custom process that we've built that is going to flash this chip with our firmware. So the process is we apply the short to pins five and six. We plug in the power. We wait about one and a half seconds. We release the short and then the camera does the rest on its own. So we're going to do this in real time. So step one, I'm going to plug in the USB cord to the camera so we can hold the camera still. Now make sure you get it all the way in. I found this port's a little clunky. Got the other end here ready to plug in. Got the SD card in. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our screwdriver. Now we're not pushing hard, but I'm just pushing enough pressure on the screwdriver so that it's making contact with both legs. So here we go. Got my cord, we're plugging in, plugged and release. So if we got everything right, this is gonna go ahead and boot up from the SD and it's going to do the flash for us. We'll know here shortly because it'll do a motor sweep 
And if you're still on factory firmware, it's going to beep and make a bunch of noise. If you're on Tingino, it's going to be nice and quiet. So because this is so fast, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up my phone and get ready. I hear the IR cut. There's the sweep. And we're going to look to see if we get a Thingino network on our network list. That'll be the next step of the process. Now, if your camera doesn't go the first time, just rewind the video and do it again. You'll get it. That timing is pretty critical and I've gotten pretty good at it. So you see, I've got my Thingino network already. If you don't have yours yet, then the process did not work. So go ahead and back up and do it again. Now here's our config page. Once you connect to the Thingino network, it should redirect you right away to the Thingino config page. If it does not, then go ahead and open your browser on your device and punch in 172.16.0.1. So I go ahead and config it. You put in your password for the root user. Whenever you log in with the web browser or if you want to use SSH, the username is root and the password is going to be whatever you type in right there. Next, you have the Wi Fi credentials. Make sure you're putting in the credentials for a 2.4 gigahertz Wi Fi network. These cameras do not have support for 5 gigahertz networks. Once you've got that, you can go ahead and hit save credentials. It'll take you to a confirmation screen where you can make sure everything looks good and hit proceed. Now you get your camera configuration completed screen and it's going to write all the settings to the camera and reboot it. We're going to let that happen and then we're going to reassemble the guy. This should only take a few more seconds. Once we get the motor sweep and such, we'll go ahead and power it down and reassemble it. There we've got our motor sweep. I have noticed the motors on this thing are pretty weak and it seems like it struggles to move, but we're not going to make too much fun of it. It's doing the best it can. So we had our motor sweep. Let's go ahead and unplug the power and we're going to reassemble. Uh, as you do that, go ahead and tilt this back. The SD card slot goes on the side with two screw holes and this tab right here, you got to kind of get in first. There we go. I'll make sure your cabling is out of the way. Put that in so you don't get jammed up. There we go. That's together. Now go ahead and roll the face forward. Go ahead and pop out your SD card too. We don't need that anymore. And we're going to drop our screws in and go ahead and tighten it up. Get your dollar fifty dollar general screwdriver. And there we go. All three of these guys are tight. Camera is reassembled and back together and ready to go. Now, one other thing I'm going to want to get is something to push the reset pin on this. For most of these cameras, they have an exposed button that you can just press. But this one, for whatever reason, it's recessed in there. We're going to want to be able to tap that in just a second. Now, I've got this little Allen key that seems like it fits okay. So we're going to go ahead and use that. So let's go ahead and plug the camera back in. And while it's starting up, you go ahead and flip these antennas up the way that they're intended to go. So it's a little handsome devil. We're going to give it a minute to do its startup sequence. One thing this camera doesn't have that's kind of strange, it does not have an indicator LED showing the status on most devices you'll see a blue flashing led while it's getting connected to the wi-fi 
On this one, we're just going to wait a minute and give it the opportunity to do that. So that should be good. Now, here's one of my favorite tricks with Thingino. I'm going to bring this up to the microphone so you all can hear it at home. And I'm going to use my Allen key to tap the reset. Just tap it. IP address is 192.168.82.169. And now we know the IP address of this camera on the network. So let me go ahead and pull that up on my phone. All right, now we get our login page. We're going to go ahead and enter the root username. And we're going to enter the password that we chose. And here we go. Hi, Mom. Hi, everybody. So there you can see we've got a working camera on the preview page here. Now, of course, the preview page is not a smooth video stream. This is just a preview. So don't be surprised that the video is not super smooth. Definitely you want to use RTSP and OnVIF to control and view this device. So previously, the cheapest camera that we had was the Senato D1. And to be fair to that camera, it is pretty good for its price. It's somewhere between 10 and $15, depending on if they have a sale going, usually it's 15, but that one is a 1080p camera. I would say even in addition to resolution, it has a better sensor than you get with this guy, but for $4 or so, you're going to be able to use this for a lot of things where you wouldn't want to put something you spent actual money on. And you're going to see some of those things in some future videos that I'm going to be doing with some of mine. Now the listing on Timu, they do call this in the picture a GT3, and there's some other names they call it in some other listings as well. I'm gonna go ahead and put the link for the exact one that I bought, so you have the highest chance of getting the right thing when you go to order one yourself. So go ahead and check that out, that's right down there. Like I said, I bought three of these for $3.70 a piece, and I had to actually add some other junk on there in order to meet my $20 minimum order to get it delivered. But it's really crazy what you can get for four bucks. This camera, it's got full tilt and pan on it. The sensor is not great, as I said, but it does have a white lamp and it's got infrared and it's got good enough night vision. This thing is really surprisingly well featured for $4. So let me know down in the comments what you're planning on doing with your four dollar almost disposable ip camera i'm going to continue working on trying to get to a no tools install for this guy but there's a couple but there's a couple more videos i need to make to build up to that definitely if you're interested in some more of the actual iot hacking stuff you're going to enjoy those anyways that's going to wrap it up for this video if your install didn't go as smoothly as mine did feel free to jump onto our discord and we can help you out right there as always don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you're interested in this sort of content, definitely hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you over at the Hackers Homestead Discord channel. Any questions or comments you've got, drop them right down below. And I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, take care, everybody. Stay fresh, cheese bags.